And we're back. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV. Africa to our first major conversation this morning. I guess already on standby. Let's quickly uh, give you a background to this discussion. Now, on December 6, as you may uh, recollect, the Central Bank of Nigeria directed the deposit money banks and other financial institutions to ensure that weekly over-the-counter cash withdrawals by individuals and corporate entities do not exceed 100,000 naira and 500,000 naira, respectively, among other uh, considerations. Now, the policy which is expected to take effect nationwide from January 9, 2023, has elicited a varied reactions amongst Nigerians, the latest of which is human rights advocate Femi Falano. Uh, the lawyer has faulted the new cash withdrawal policy introduced by the Apex Bank. Now, reacting to the policy, uh, Falano, uh, in a statement on Monday, said the Apex Bank's new cash withdrawal limit was, quote, illegal and no. He also said it contravenes the provisions of Section 2 of the Money Laundering Act 2022. Uh, the human rights advocate also said that uh, Section 2 of the Act limits cash withdrawals by individuals and corporate entities to 5 million naira and 10 million naira respectively while arguing that since the act has not been amended the new cbn policy is therefore quote null and void now it's quite interesting uh, uh expose by the legal luminary joining us to analyze this we have uh emeka opara he's a lawyer and also Mukhtar. Mohammed, a developmental economist, you're both joining us via Zoom in Lagos. Gentlemen, good morning and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good morning. All right, let's just start from the basics. Uh, do you agree with um, Chief Femi Falano SAN's uh, position that this is against the law, looking at the uh, laws that he's cited? I'll start with you, Mekka Opara. Oh, thank you very much. Um, with uh, due respect, uh, to the Lanai SAN, I have a lot of respect for him. I, I, I beg to differ. Um, if you look at Section 2 of uh, the Money Laundering Act, it does not place those limits as a right. The Act, uh, that particular section, Section 1, 2 subsection 1 of the uh, Money Laundering Act, simply places a maximum limit that could be withdrawn. It does not say that that but those particular limits are a right if you look at the wording of the section. But we cannot read section two of the Money Laundry Act in isolation of the CBN Act of 2007 that gives the Central Bank of Nigeria the power to regulate all these things. The monetary policies are uh, under section uh, 12. We have uh, the monetary policy committee chaired by the CBN governor. We have other sections. We have section 20 uh, that permits uh, the, the CBN to issue and change, make changes to uh, bank uh, tender, the uh, legal tender, uh, for example, the coloration and all that, and all, some other powers given. And these powers given are definitely to be inter in interpreted within the you know, current context, the modern context. And if you look at the monetary policy from OMO, that's um, uh, the, uh, some of the current things that are being done now by central banks, this is one of them. And these are powers that are specifically given to the Central Bank of Nigeria. And that is, it does not mean that you cannot take payment, but you may not take it in a particular form so as to curtail inflation, so as to make sure that cash monies that are outside the former sector stuck somewhere in people's backyards in um, in some other places onto what places they are brought into the system these are powers given specifically to the central bank of nigeria and when they do this they do not deny a person 
the right to his or her money. But they have the power to say that you take your money um, in cash up to a particular limit, and then you take other monies in some other form, other than, for example, electronic, other than cash. That is what I will say. Right. Uh, I do not think we should read Section 2 of the Money Laundry Act in isolation of the powers given to the CBN under the CBN Act. Okay, Mukta, um, you've listened to uh, uh, your lawyer counterpart. What, what's your take? But before you come in, just to read Section 2 of the uh, uh, Money Laundering Act uh, uh, 2022 as amended, it says that um, uh, this is uh, titled is on a part to prohibition and mo of money laundering. No, it says, uh, subsection 1, no person or body corporate uh, shall accept in the transaction through a financial institution, make or accept cash payment of a sum exceeding 5 million naira, or its equivalent in the case of an individual, uh, or 10B, 10 million naira, it's equivalent in the case of a body corporate. Uh, that, that's that, and some other things there as well. So what are your thoughts on, on what, you know, Falanoa said, vis-a-vis uh, -vis what uh, Emeka Opara is saying this morning? Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer. So I will bring it to my own name and from looking at the act and uh, what I think, or uh, what I think um, we're we are having issues there. Uh, number one, it's a multi policy decision, which is very right. I support the cashless policy and for the cashless policy. But again, um, if you look at what Falano is saying, uh, because the CBA is not saying you cannot withdraw more than five million, but like he said, you can do it at a particular form, at a particular, they tell you how to go about it. In every economy in the world, there is that um, that is uh, embedded in, in in their law, not just because um, we have an act that is just uh, there. Now, then, secondly, you need to look at it that what Falano is saying that the CBN is imposing a fine. So what they are saying, what they fine, they are not the one. They are not the one to impose fine. The fine, if you want to impose a fine, must be backed by law. I think that's where it's coming from. So you can't be the judge in your own matter. So if you want that to become an offense that we take to court and we'll be able to justify, then you have to enact a law to bind it. I think that's where he's coming from. He's saying, you know, you can't tell me that if because the money laundry act says five million or ten million. Now you are saying if I withdraw above this amount, I'm going to pay a fine. Remember that even the the, the app also, um, I mean, the if you go to the money not I'd say that these financial institutions are to report any transaction for individual above one million and above five million. You need to report it to the to the uh, security agencies. So definitely, I think the challenge there has to do with implementation why i mean define especially define that's what he's talking about you don't have a right to find it people if you don't have a law backing it because there's nowhere in the act of the cbn or in the money laundry that says that if i withdraw above certain certain amount of money i should be fine remember that why i'm even skeptical about the whole thing is remember that this is this law is not new it is just that they have now reduced the limits. So why have nobody challenged it up to now? That because it's going to affect a lot of people. Because remember that even before now, if you, if, if you are going to deposit as an individual, you cannot deposit more than $3 million. If you deposit $3 million, you are fine. So why have nobody challenged it? But when it came to cash withdrawal, is becoming an issue. So there's a lot of, uh, like they said, the lawyers, I mean, uh, Mr. Michael Parham, correct me if I'm wrong. They say until a law is challenging court or until a decision or a policy is challenging court before you know whether that policy is wrong or right. So maybe I leave that to the lawyers to go and begin to challenge themselves in court and then taking the CBN to court. We could have um, a, a decision on that. But on the cashless policy is the way to go, like Mr. Michael Parham said. Is the way to go is the way it's going globally nigeria cannot be an ex exception to the law especially where we pride ourselves or we are not just pride ourselves we are the largest economy in africa so for me that is the more reason why i'm in support of the cashless policy I mean, but in the law terms there could be for lawyers to argue 
Well, so let's even take it from that angle of, uh, of argument uh, with uh, legal practitioners. And I'm asking Okwara at this point if he agrees with his colleagues, because uh, a lot of them have said that the cash uh, withdrawal limits by the CBN is a further impoverishment of the impoverished people. And, and this is to say that it's against the human rights uh, you know, the human rights of the people. They have a right to dignity of life. Now, let's also not forget that there has also reported statistics that 1.4 million POS operators may lose their jobs. So, uh, Okpara, I'd like to ask you, do you agree with your colleagues who say that this is actually, you know, a further impoverishment of the impoverished people and there's, there's a need to actually seek, uh, you know, a legal redress? Uh, I do not agree. I definitely do not agree uh, with uh, that uh, proposition. Uh, this has nothing to do with human rights. Uh, rather, I will say, you know, the law uh, has some policies. There is the educative policy of the law. And in there are situations where the law is on a pedestal above the general public. And policies are, are made to bring the general public up to the level of the policy of the law, the reason of the law. It may uh, be not very palatable at the beginning, but usually it will work better. And that is where this cashless policy is going. It has nothing to do with human rights. And concerning the POS operators, I think in the long run it will pay them more because you know it will be diff it will not be very easy for Nigerians to adjust to this new this new cashless policy. And all the it will rather create jobs because what the POS operators should do now is to incorporate limited liability companies. They operate to limited limited liability companies. And thereby, they would be able to withdraw 500,000 in a week. And uh, if you incorporate two, you, you, you withdraw 1 million, 500,000 from each of the two companies. So, I mean, there is always a way to get around it. Um, along the line, people will get to understand that uh, it will pay us more. But I see this particular policy as one singular policy that could impact, that could have the greatest positive impact on our democracy. I know most of the people that are against this are politicians and uh, their cronies. If this policy is allowed to hold until, even if we remove, even if we remove the fine aspect of it, um, I think my colleague there, uh, Mr. Mohammed, has. Uh, raise a, 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 an important point, uh, we could, uh, decide, we could uh, agree that the, 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 the fine aspect of it uh, may not rise to the agreed legal standard. But if the policy, the cashless policy, this particular limit is allowed to hold, vote by it will be reduced by at least 70 or 80%. And the plan of our democracy has been vote by. I know most of the people that have been against this policy are politicians who have stacked money. And you know, we 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 know of uh, situations in the back uh, uh, in the past when you a voter will have to go when he when he votes he will lift up his uh, vote uh, the the the. the the, the, what he voted, he will have to lift it up for the agent of a particular party to know. And when he steps out from the polling boat, boot, he gets paid a particular sum. And you need to have a lot of cash to be able to do this. The, if the CBN should properly enforce this particular limit, the issue of uh, uh, more, um, of, of uh, in uh, money in uh, in uh, bullion vans and all that, uh, I think uh, we will not be able to have it in 2023, and it will help our democracy a lot.
for that alone, I think we should uh, we should make uh, the, uh, the the we should allow that the limit to hold. We should allow it to work. All right, uh, um, uh, um, Ms. Sopar, Mukta raised a, a point, very interesting point, um, talking about the the legality of all of this. Um, he said, you know, that um, there's there's no law backing or empowering the central bank uh, to impose fines and uh, for you to impose any fine of any sort to say to anybody in this country, pay this amount of money for flouting this rule, you must it must be backed by law. Um, which what do you say to that? Well, I, I think I will have to, I, I, I may be veering towards agreeing with him on that particular one. But then there is, uh, um, if a particular law has aspect of it that is legal, and aspects of it that uh, may not rise up to the legal threshold, uh, the courts will know what to do. Uh, they will be able to strike down the unlawful, um, or if I may use the word, the, the aspect of it that does not rise to the legal threshold and uphold the aspect of it that does. So um, I think uh, this is what should happen. We should not throw away this particular policy that should help us, help our economy, help our democracy. We should not throw it away. Uh, the CBN could make some changes and say, look, uh, after examining its act well and its, um, its uh, the powers under the CBN Act, uh, if it finds that it does not have the power to actually impose fines, it could withdraw the fines. But, but make sure that it. Uh, sorry, sir. Do you foresee? Yeah, yeah. Do you foresee? To, yeah, Mr. Power, Do you foresee um, this 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 case? Uh, you know this this move by the CBN standing the test of the court. Um, I mean, you're saying yes, you, you, you think that it should be allowed to stand, but do you foresee it standing the test? Because, of course, um, uh, the Honorable Justice, whoever is going to be sitting on this case, who, in whoever, whoever has caught this will be heard, uh, will not attach sentiments to his, his judgment, you know, his ruling. So do you foresee, based on your experience as a lawyer, and based on the uh, uh, issues put on the table by Femi Falano essay, and do you foresee this passing the legal test in the court? Uh, I very well do. Uh, the only gray, uh, gray area of it is uh, the fine. Uh, like I said, the, the court will know what to do. Uh, the court will not throw away the baby with the bath water. Well, well, let's get back to Muktak. Muktak, I'd like to ask you what the implication of this is for the Nigerian economy. I mean, as we inch closer to 2023, what are we expected to see? What exactly does this mean? Will we see less spending? Will we see people spending more? What does this uh, limit, uh, you know, what, what will it, this limit do to the economy? Well, number one, you need to know that... Um we are, we are in the political seasons where the politicians, as the CBN is planning, they are also planning. <laughs> so you remember that the CBN have come up with a lot of policies that are almost all of them taking place, taking step in January. Remember, we've not forgotten the reprinting of the new Naira note. So they must have gotten this and that. They are saying, okay, cash withdrawal limit and all that. So the CBN also, as the politicians are planning, the CBN is also planning. So that's why you are seeing the uproar in the National Assembly over the, over the withdrawal. But what will it do to our economy? Definitely, like uh, Mr. Parra said, the, the first engineer's introduction, uh, you need to look at uh, what are the tools that you use to um, reduce inflation. And one of those tools is um, mopping up liquidities in, 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 in your system. Uh, what, it, what it does do for the system is you begin to see the number of liquidity um, amounts in circulation will reduce. And you know we are going, we are not only going to an election year, we are also going to a festivity period, which is start from, from December to, um, to January. And you know that the peak of the spending in electoral campaign, especially in the month of January. So definitely that could help in uh, the CBN is trying to look at that as a means to reduce inflation. Remember also they they've hiked the MP uh, MC, M, M, um, the MP the 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 the, the, the MPC rate also just to make sure that uh, we don't get we gain 
because they've gained a little in terms of hiding the rig for a, for, for, for a while. So they are also looking at sustaining that momentum, and that is why they are, they, they are also coming up with this cashless policy. Now, cashless policy will impact the economy positively because, again, number one, we are not even looking at the area of security. We also need to look at the area of security. Like Mr. Parra said, I'm not even looking at the political area, the area of security whereby most bandits ask for, for cash. And so definitely it, will also, it might also be key to reduce the insecurity that we have in the country because when you are telling me to go and bring 10 million, I know that I cannot, trans I cannot get 10 million cash to bring to you. I will need to transfer it to an account. So definitely, again, that will be a big challenge for those that are, for those, the victim of the kidnappers and then for the security agents to be able to get to those. So it, it's security wise also, that is an, another advantage. And when we're talking about the, PUS, uh, I need to get it clear that uh, if you go to the bank now, the conduit pipe that have been used to commit fraudulent activities have been from the POS terminals. Because what we see in the POS terminal these days is people committing fraud through defrauding people through the banking, um, to, uh, maybe paying money into their account, and then in turn withdrawing it immediately to the, the POS terminal. That is another thing that will happen again, that will, will, will withdraw limits also we reduce that. Remember that Mr. Pura was saying that uh, maybe they paid themselves to a military liability company. Remember, it's a system. They are not the owner of the POS. The, the CBN is the one that have put some in place that you cannot withdraw like your ATM, like when they say you can only withdraw 20,000. 20, so when you withdraw 20,000, you cannot say, oh, I want to go to another POS to withdraw another 20,000. You know, all the systems are together. So definitely on the POS matter, the CBN may have to do what they say um, they, they will do in terms of if you are going to withdraw above that limit. That's one thing we are not saying. That. The CBN is also saying that you can also be permitted to withdraw above that limit, but there are certain conditions that you will meet. So maybe they will have to do that for the POS terminal because they are the ones that have brought the POS terminal. And the POS terminal have been able to achieve something um, in financial inclusion, especially in the rural area. If you're in Lagos, when you go to the markets in Lagos, you want to use your ATM card, the madam or the businesswoman is telling you that, please, sir, there's a POS terminal beside it because they are thinking of how to reduce costs of their, uh, or, or in their business. And because the cost that you do in the POS terminal is going to be um, charged towards you. So business people look at ways to reduce costs. And POS terminal has come to be one of those. We remember the CBN came with the e naira, but that also have not had the kind of patronage that they think they should they have. My greatest challenge to the CBN policy still remains cyber security. If you want to go cashless, then you need to do something about your cyber security. Because when you go cashless, that means 90% of your transaction is cashless. So we need to build a robust cyber security. And the bank alone will not have that financial resources to build that. So that's why I'm saying the CBA should be able to help them in putting up policy that will build a robust financial security, especially cyber security. For me, that would be the greatest challenge. But the policy in itself, is going to galvanize the economy. Just like you see a policy like making other people to lose jobs, that policy also creates jobs also. Remember, we are going to the FinTech era, and we have a lot of FinTech companies. And if you look at large um, um, developed economies of the world, what drive their economy is the service sector. What drive the service sector these days is the FinTech. So definitely, we are going into an era, even in Lagos now, some POS, you don't need to put your card, you just use your 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 your, your fingerprint or you use your face, your 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 face facial recognition and you get your money. So definitely some banks have already gone cutless. So definitely that is fintech. And so every, they keep on improving on, 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 on this technology. So for me, it's going to help our economy, but we need to build a very robust cyber right. security thank you very much or network very interesting indeed a uh, question you know will remain um you know we should take the lead should there uh, because the fellow is saying if the federal government doesn't withdraw that uh, order that central bank uh, he will head to court he will sue and then of course uh, the association of mobile money and bank agents of nigeria this is a pos operators association uh, saying that uh, they will engage the services of falano's chambers you know to join him to go to court. Um, so the uh, question is, you know, we should take the lead. Patriotism, to say, well, we know that businesses are at stake, but let's put national interest first, or or law, which is, this is our right. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time, Emeka Okpara. 
is a lawyer and Mukhtar Mohammed, developmental economist, uh, both joining us via Zoom from Lagos. We appreciate your time and hope to have you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have more conversations ahead. Definitely, we'll take a break. And when we return, we'll be diving straight to the second conversation. Please stay with us. <laughs>